Hi and welcome to this week's GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on the show this week, we have a look at some very special titanium pedals, 3D printed. In fact, there's a really cool, probably the coolest cross-country bike we've seen for a while. It's a BMC and it's custom painted. We check out some tires that give back to the trails and that's some really cool stuff from you lovely lot. Okay, so let's dive into our topic. And this week I wanna talk a little bit about technology that impresses you on your mountain bike. Uh, it could be anything, it could be suspension, it could be the compounds in a rubber in your tire, uh, it could be any number of cool things. And I got to this by a pair of pedals dropping through the post to me. Now these are made by a brand called Titanium. They're made from titanium. They are 3D printed, or they call cold fusion technology. Uh, essentially, it's additive manufacturing using powdered titanium. Like, unbelievable stuff. And you look close on certain parts, uh, in particular on the cleats, and you can see those layers of titanium there, the way it's built and printed up. Mind-blowing stuff. Now, a few especially cool things about these. Other than the fact the pedal spins uh, around the axle itself, there are no other moving parts. There's nothing there that needs lubrication. There's nothing there that needs maintenance. It's a fit and forget item. And I think these are the lightest pedals on earth. And I'm gonna say, in fact, I'm gonna go along with that because of the fact there are other brands like Aerolite that have pedals that weigh 30 grams each. These weigh 50 each. But I'd say Aerolite are cheating because their pedals don't really have a body. It's basically just an axle with a, a tiny sleeve around it. That's still got a body that you can actually rest your foot on. Um, so I'm gonna claim that. Um, Speed Play, some of you might think of. They made the Frog years back and they made a number of different pedals now, all ultra light, but still a portly 168 grams compared to 200 grams. Now, a pair of these pedals, let's put this into perspective as far as what weight goes. So, a pair of these weigh the same as uh, this uh, nearly empty bottle of Tabasco. Yep. Uh, this line weighs 101 grams. And this espresso mug weighs 97 grams, empty, of course. 97 grams, that's a pair of pedals for a bike, yeah? That is just absolutely bonkers. But what I wanna talk about is the technology behind them that's allowed this to happen. 3D printing, additive manufacturing, cold fusion or cold metal fusion technology, all these sorts of new types of technology are just mind blowing. Now, I remember the first time I saw a proper carbon fiber frame, I saw the layup in the mold and the way it was had a bladder on the inside to expand it and then basically bake it in the oven. And I couldn't believe the technology. I was like, you know, I've seen the raw materials and I've seen the epoxy and seen how it goes into a mold and you get a frame that comes out like it's like a sort of a black magic. It was just incredible. And I kind of feel the same about this. Um, bearing in mind that when I looked at carbon stuff the first time it would have been, I don't know, early 2000s. We're in 2021 now and I'm looking at a 3D printed pedal. Uh, I just I just think it's incredible technology. Of course, it's not new as such because we know that Atherton Manufacturing or Atherton Bikes have been using this sort of manufacturing to produce their frames. Now, they didn't pick the titanium additive manufacturing as a unique selling point. Of course, it will end up being one. They've chosen it because of the fact it allows them to make all of these lugs uh, and have different configurations on geometry and literally hit a button on the machine. I'm sure it's a bit more com um, complicated than that. And the lugs all come out and they break them up and they bond in tubes and then you have your bike. The cool thing is that they also employed uh, Dave Weagle to develop the DW6 system to use on their bikes. Now the six part, it, it's kind of irrelevant because the fact it still performs the same as the DW4 style linkage, a regular DW link. The sixth link or the extra link on there is essentially there. So however they develop the lugs on the frame to cater for different geometry on the bikes means the suspension will still feel the same on the rear because they're not sort of confined to where they have to, you know, if they have to put that pivot placement in a slightly different place, that link can sort of take that into account and offer the same feeling. But the fact is they're using this new technology to make frames with very little or zero waste. I think it's incredible, really good, good way to manufacture stuff. And again, someone being able to manufacture pedals with complex things going on. It's a cleat with an engagement system. They've got six degrees of float and like a 14 degree angle look before it um, disengages. But to have that out of printed items made of metal, I just think that is mind blowing. And it's been a long time since I've looked at something that's, you know, <laughs> considering how small this thing is, since I looked at something and just thought, yeah, all right, there's no way on earth this appeals to me. Um, but I can't believe how impressive it is. Uh, just looking at the detail up close, the layers of the titanium, the leaf springs on there, no moving parts. 
you know, it's got a leaf spring design as a retention system. I think that is just genius. Absolutely great stuff. Now, when was the last time you were really impressed by the way something was manufactured on a bike? Could be anything, could be an alloy frame, it could be a CNC frame like the Poles or other brands like Actifu that are bonding bikes together or bolting bikes together. Could be someone like Vittoria with the four rubber compounds all extruded into one tire casing. Come on, let's talk about serious tech on bikes and manufacturing tech. That is up there for me. I think that's seriously cool. Now, at this stage, these are prototypes. It does say that on there. I'm gonna throw a link to the website for Titanium uh, just in the description underneath. Click through and have a read. It's fascinating stuff. And something else cool about these, so they are lighter than the speed, the lightest speed play pedals, which weigh 168 grams. The speed play pedals are quite a bit more expensive. I think these are 329 euros. It's projected these are gonna cost. I think the speed play is near 400. So interesting stuff the way they're making them. Um, anyhow, enough for me. I just think it's really cool. I wanted to share a bit about this because I love it when stuff like this turns up unexpected and someone's genuinely pushing the envelope as far as the way things are made. Now, that's not to suggest these are the best pedals on earth, by the way. They're just like crazy tech behind them and they're super light as well. If you're a weight weenie, they could be the thing you've been looking for. <laughs> Okay, so let's pick up news then. And uh, there's actually a couple of bits I shot last week and didn't make it into the show because we had so much stuff. So I'm gonna throw you now to uh, Pauline Ferran Prevost's brand new BMC bike, custom painted. Oh, what a thing this is. Uh, loads of shots on screen. And it's designed by No Curves, which is a Milan-based, or who is a Milan-based artist. And the cool thing about this, the design process began with a bit of a curveball. So No Curves, through a string of questions, at the 29 year old French woman and she had to reply in picture format as fast as possible. And then using those responses, then they designed the frame, uh, the way it looks around it. And I think you'll agree with me, it looks pretty flipping cool, doesn't it? Um, so, I mean, look at the thing. So a few notes that BMC have just surprised us with to go with this. I mean, other than the obvious, the bike does look really cool. They say the vibrant color palette matches, um, makes use of our rainbow stripes, of course, uh, representing all of the continents and Pauline's fiery character. There's a panther on the head tube, which represents Pauline, a um, bit concerning. Uh, it says super calm on the exterior, but with internal rage ready to be unleashed on race day. It's actually kind of cool, isn't it? Um, and not only a nod to the bike's natural terrain, the deconstructed mountains, sounds like a bit of a posh cake recipe or something, doesn't it? Uh, deconstructed food and stuff. Uh, represent the new challenge with BMC, of course, the new sponsor, the highs and lows of the sport and how easy it is to go from one to another. Uh, not so sure about that, but um, it looks cool, doesn't it? Uh, BMC logo stays true to its DNA on the down tube. Well, that's prime marketing, isn't it? Uh, joined by Pauline on the chain state and a discreet signature by No Curves, which is cool. I mean, to be honest, I don't really care about any of that stuff. The, uh, the fact is, it just looks amazing. Yeah, the stripes, acknowledgement in there, the BMC frames are absolutely gorgeous. Um, actually, I've not had a chance to ride one of those, but I love the fact they have that internal uh, dropper post as part of the frame, very cool thing. And some, on some of the race ones, they've got a self-drop feature on them, mega cool that is. Um, I think they've had their slightly longer geometry cross-country bikes for quite a while. Definitely one of the favorites as far as I'm concerned, but that is just, so I'm just looking at it on my screen here, it's just gorgeous. And actually the pan front head tube is pretty cool, I guess. And now let's check out a very cool pair of tires available from Specialized that actually give back to the trails that you ride using them. Cool stuff this is. Okay, next up, some tires from Specialized. Now, a while back we were reported on Specialized new sort of system of uh, tire compounds and a great range of tires. And I've got to say, as far as bike manufacturers go, making tires is a bit of an unknown entity for many brands, but Specialized have nailed this from real early on. I mean, I used to use their old storm controls in that Umagumma compound, which was gray. They released a red tire compound, which I believe was something to do with Jason McCoy. Basically just wanted some red tires. And they've done some great tires over the years. Now these latest ones actually give back to uh, trail building essentially. So they're calling these uh, this part of the soil searching program. So especially I say in 2019 and 2020 alone, Soil Searching provided over 11,000 volunteer hours through more than 200 sponsored dig days on six continents with the help of 50 support trail builders and advocates around the world. And with every sale of a set of these tires, um, of which, of course, it's a regular butcher pattern you can see on this one, it comes in one size only, 29 by 2.3, tan wool, so they are cool as anything. Uh, and it's got a T9 sticky fast rubber, so not the stickiest, but uh, probably the optimum for most people to use there. 
Uh, with the sale of every set of these tyres, a portion goes directly towards funding the trail maintenance on trails we enjoy shredding so much. Uh, if nothing else, that is worth a mention. That's great. And I think actually all bike manufacturers should kind of consider trying to give a little bit back because uh, really they're getting a lot from, from us, really. So uh, I think it's great stuff. Good move from Specialized and a killer looking pair of tyres there. I love a set of tan walls. You a lover or you a hater? Mm, definitely a bit of a marmite thing that. Okay, Kotick are back with yet another bike release. So this time it's the Beefy or the BFE hardtail frame. Now I actually rode one of these, I think in probably 2003, maybe a very early iteration of it. Fantastic riding frame. Uh, so it's made from a combination of metals. It's essentially a hardcore hardtail, but you can ride like trails on this as in your regular single track trails. You could jump the bike. You could set up with a, a 124, a 140, a 160, however you like, do what you want with it. Uh, retail price is 549 quid here in the UK. There's a couple of cool colors. There's the gloss orange, as you can see on screen. Uh, very bold, looks nice that. And there's the army green, which is, uh, I think it looks like a matte or perhaps a satin finish. Uh, either way, they both look really quite cool. Now, the nice thing about this is the fact it's made from chrome molly. So it's got a mixture of different metals and technologies in the frame. Most notably is the fact it's got Reynolds 853 down tube on it. Now Reynolds tubing, in particular Reynolds 853, is known for that really nice springy ride that it offers. And arguably on a mountain bike, in particular one that's got a long down tube, this is gonna be the place where you can tune the feel of the ride the most. Now I think this is really cool because you look at a steel frame and you could just think, eh, it's just made of steel, double butted, triple butted, whatever, um, it's gonna feel like a steel frame. But not necessarily, like, Psychotic is actually quite cool and quite in tune with the fact that you can actually get a lot more out of a frame by using different metals, different places, different tube profiles, like uh, internally overlaced tubing, like the top tube on there to retain the stiffness that you need, but having the sort of the flex and the compliance from that down tube. Fascinating stuff, I think it's really cool. Um, what do you need to know about it? So the BB is 10 mil lower than previous models. It's the 27 and a half inch compatible. They say that you can run this with, uh, their words here, uh, want a pump track, lapping, slalom willing, berm railer, plug in a 120 mil fork for pinpoint accuracy. Uh, looking for a single track slaying trail shredder, well there's a sentence, go for 140 mil, or for downhill and enduro sending, beefy works best with a 160 fork. But pretty cool that the manufacturer's offering something that's that versatile, so uh, you know, you can dress it up as you want. I think that's great. Also, you might have noticed there's loads of bottle cages. In fact, this bike has all of the bottle cages that everyone's been looking for. If you're um, after bottle cages, then this could be the one for you. So on the underside of the down tube in the old uh, dog egg zone, there's one there, but clearly intended for bike packing, for mounting heavier things down there. And the same that, you know, you could dress the bike up for bike packing using what's on the top side of the down tube there. Look how many bottle bosses there are essentially along there. So yeah, they could be used for the hose routing as well, or your cable, cable routing on the bike, uh, but they happen to be perfectly spaced. So you, along any of those, you can run bottle cage bosses. So along, along with that means the tools, we showed those Nukeproof tube straps that you mount using those. There's loads of different hardware kits available on the market now using that stuff. And of course, bottle cages. Uh, so going to your heart's content. Uh, what else do you need to know? Yeah, it's a 2021 model. Uh, seat angle is half a degree steeper than previous models. And that's it, 549 quid in the UK. It's a bit of a bargain as far as a hardcore frame goes. It's gonna have a great ride to it. There you go, that's it. Okay, next up in news is something a little bit strange, some digital tech here. So there's a company called Earshots. Now they are headphones, they come in this really cool little case. Uh, the case takes a charge, the charge um, charges the headphones. Now the cool thing about these, they're obviously wireless, as you'd imagine. They use a magnetic system, so when you actually put them onto your ear, actually holds them in place, they can't sort of rattle loose. You can have a phone call while you're out on your bike. And because of the way that they mount, they don't go into your ear canal like a lot of in-ear headphones do, uh, which means you can still hear the bike and you can hear the trails. So um, something we should say actually is if you're considering using headphones in traffic, just don't um, for your own safety and also awareness of what's going on. But uh, dad lecture over now. If you're listening to music out on the trails, this is a really cool way of doing it. So they obviously communicate with your phone. You get about four hours of use out of one charge on these, which are enough for most people. In fact, you can have a phone call while you're riding your bike. I'm sure that's really cool to some people. Personally, I don't want anyone to bother me when I'm out riding, but I know that people love to stay connected and this is a really cool tool for that. Uh, they're weatherproof, windproof, waterproof, sweatproof, all that sort of stuff. 
and they do exactly what you'd imagine they would do. Now, undoubtedly, it's a really cool piece of tech and really useful for a lot of you out there. Uh, great for people training, great for people riding bikes, basically you just need some headphones uh, for that sort of use. In fact, I think they sponsor people like Sam Blenkinsop uh, who help develop these. So it's a really cool concept. If you're looking for a pair of outdoor spec headphones for your bike, happy days. And like I said, I don't like to listen to music when I ride a bike because I like to stay connected to the terrain. I like to hear nature's music. I like to hear my uh, tire scratching for grip. I kind of hear my way down the trail a bit. I know that some of you will look at me like I'm raving mad saying that, but uh, uh, and I see a lot of people riding in headphones, so it's, it's a thing. So they may be for you. One other really cool feature they have is they have a solo mode. So you can set them up to run just a single headphone, but it'll be stereo through there. Uh, great if you just want a little bit of sound, but the same sort of thing I'm looking for is to hear what's going on outside on the bike as such. Um, really cool thing. Now, if you're serious about listening to your music, then these perhaps might not be the best thing. They're, of course, a compromise because of the fact they offer the sporting equivalent in the set of headphones. They're not going to be the same as having like a, a serious set of noise cancelling, um, you know, over ear headphones or even something that fits into your ear canal because the way the bass driver works outside of your ear even when you line up correctly. It's never gonna be quite as bassy, but nonetheless, clear sound, pretty loud stuff, kinda of cool. Who listens to music when they ride out there? And do you listen to on some sort of sport headphones like those, you regular ones? Do you have a speaker on your bike? Even, in fact, that could be a cool thing for top mods. If anyone has got a sound system on their bikes, send it in to us, let's see it. And I'd love to know your thoughts on listening to headphones while you're riding though. Um, I feel like this might be a mixed bag out there. Um, for one, Appreciate technology, but it's not my cup of tea. Now, what do you think? Let us know in those comments. Okay, next up in news is literally just an Instagram post. Uh, Yeti actually posted this, but then I went to uh, the actual painter's site. So this is made rad by Tony. We've seen some of his great stuff before. Uh, I think he's done bikes for Bryn Atkins, and he did that, the snakeskin effect bike, and done some really cool stuff. But look at this Yeti, wow. Uh, the pastel shades, I think this is, Probably the only custom painted Yeti I've seen that I would I would literally like I'd, I'd take fingers off to have a go on that thing. I think it's just gorgeous. I mean, look at it. Oh, wow, what a paint job on the bike. It's done in conjunction with the Grow Cycling Foundation as well. So they're working um, basically against, well, in, in diversity and inclusion in cycling, basically they're working for a great cause. In fact, here is their Instagram page on screen. Give them a follow, they're doing great things. Um, but the bike, I've got to say, wow. Okay, and last up in news is Bogtech have got another set of bars out. Now, way back in the early 2000s, they brought out the Ride Wide handlebars. So a bit of a departure from everyone running narrow bars. They were like straight in with the wide bars and loads of people use them straight away. And then of course the market changed and loads of people make them. And they've basically just dropped the mic again. They've released a 50 mil rise bar. So the highest most manufacturers are doing is about 35 or 38 mil. I love the 38. Uh, and personally, I would go higher. I'd be interested in riding a set of these bars because of the fact that I tend to run a high bar and a lot of spaces as well. So if I can lose some of those spaces and slam the stem and keep my bar in the same position, oh, it would look so much cleaner. Uh, Ratboy's been running these bars. In fact, it's probably his idea, knowing the way he rides. Uh, here's some shots of them on screen. Uh, Bergtech, they make cool stuff. Check them out if you are looking for a high rise bar that's full width, they look great. Okay, time for some comments from last week's show then. Okay, so first one's from Adam Redfern. Um, if you must restrict how many subjects are broached, so this is in, in reference to me talking about how much stuff we're trying to cram into the show, um, please use a rotation method. I, for one, love listening to your fast and sometimes wondering monologue. Well, uh, that's a flattering way of putting it, thank you. Um, touching or focusing on seemingly random objects and subjects is great and in keeping with normal banter. Uh, please don't reduce below 30 minutes as it would undoubtedly feel too rushed and don't be put off extending said duration. We're all ears. Um, does everyone else agree with that? I, I think that's ace if that's the case because we could make the show longer. Um, we don't need to make it longer as such. I think 30 minutes is probably like the magic number there. Um, and you also said most of my mates listen to you, they subscribe because of you. Great content. Thank you. Um, honestly, that, that's really cool to hear. Um, and it means what I'm doing is not wasted. So that's great. And of course, anyone disagrees, all is. Uh, we're here to try and make the great content so you can all enjoy it and learn from it, hopefully, as well. Uh, next comment uh, from Rusty2222. 
An RFID inner tube is the ultimate shark jump, a borderline offensive solution in search of a problem. And I sincerely hope that in a world of dwindling resources, it goes the same way. Oh, malicious, I love this, as internet connected kettles and digital photo frames. Yeah. I've got to say, I kind of agree with you. And I've also got to say, a bit of a confession, I've got a big pair of scissors over there and I've still got the inner tube there. And you know how I referenced I'd quite like one of those chips on the inside of a tire? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Anyway, uh, next up is from Gustavo. I had a summer job ages ago cleaning out an old garage for a company that went under. I found a toolbox with a bunch of assorted Nipex and other tools. Oh, dude. Um, I asked if I could have them since they were going to go in the bin anyway. They still live in my toolbox many years later. Sometimes you're very lucky. Hey, that's, that's a great find. And obviously it was meant to be. It's gone to someone who appreciates the tools. So uh, that's great stuff there. Uh, great to hear. Um, so in relation to Ask GMBN Tech, why do downhill bikes only have 200mm travel? Tyler says, we need to bring back the super monster T, 300mm of burly goodness. Do you know, I never got to see that fork. Um, I've ridden the monster T before, but the super, which had the extensions like, behind the dropouts there, or below the dropouts, they were insane. I'm pretty sure Chris on EMBN, he had a set of those on an Azonic at some point. I had the same frame as him, but he had the massive fork. And, pretty sure of it. Hey, if anyone out there has got a super wants to tee on a bike and you happen to be vaguely near us, like in the UK, um, I'd love to have a look at them if we can. It'd be really cool just to weigh them and just sort of have a feel of how crazy that fork is. I heard that those monster tees were based on Moto Trials forks, like the chassis of them originally, uh, which kind of makes sense because they're pretty flipping big. Our uh, next comments from Eugene. I remember the Foes racing bike with a 10 inch travel shock. Sweet times are gone. Hey, no, that, that actually had the Kermit shock on there. So it worked on a two to one ratio. So the shock had five inch travel and it gave 10 inch travel at the rear rear wheel there. So um, two inches to rear wheel movement to one inch at the shock there. But in fact, it was a five inch travel shock. And I remember riding one of those DHS, DHS Mono, I think the bike was called, and it had the Kermit fork on there as well. That bike was just bonkers to ride. So much travel and it had adjustable pedal platform on there, the same sort of technology that you see on the off-road racing trucks, which I think is where Brent Foes got all that concept from. Unbelievable at the time, but so expensive. And uh, from what I can make out, quite tricky to maintain as well, that stuff. But they were some seriously cool bikes. Uh, anyone got Foes out there? I think actually Jamie Lynn might, might be making it up. I feel like you've got some Foes bikes tucked away. Uh, obviously the old one, but you've got anything with the Kernet Shock? I'd like to see it if you have. Um, great stuff there. Uh, thank you for all those great comments. And um, oh, just noticed on a lot of one last comment actually, it just says YouTube viewer, great video as always. Where does Doddy get all of his knowledge from? Um, to be honest, I have no idea. I've got I've got one of those weird brains that just can quote stuff from random movies that I saw once 20 years ago and stuff. Just got a bit of an encyclopedic brain. Um, no idea if there's anything wrong with me or not. Um, other than having bikes on a brain, I think not. Um, I just love bikes, honestly. Um, it's quite easy for me. I just process this information because I love it. I take it in, I'm interested in stuff. Even if I'm not riding it, I'm still like constantly, uh, I'm on a quest for knowledge. Bit of a joke with my wife that uh, can't watch TV without me some, looking something up on the phone. If there's something I'm not sure about, I want to know more about, I'm straight on the phone to uh, understand it. Hey, I'm weird, I love it, but uh, uh, seems to work for this place. Thanks for the comments, guys. Okay, let's jump into some top mods then. So this is what you do to your bikes to make them different, better, more personalized. Anything you've done to your bike, take some pictures or better still video and send it to us. There's a link at the bottom of the screen and there's a click through link in the description underneath. So the first one is a Process X build. So first up, Kona Process X, what a bike. Uh, Kona bikes, so underrated these days. They are properly back in the game and I just, I haven't seen a Kona bike, that a modern one, being ridden um, anywhere. I mean, not seen a lot of people, admittedly, they've only just come out of lockdown, but I haven't seen one for quite some time. So come on, people, start buying some Konas. Let's start seeing people on the Kona bikes. So this one's from uh, Danville Forest Trails. My fresh build, 2021 Kona Process X. Uh, Nobi TR, uh, Noble TR38 carbon wheels. Industry 9 Hydra Hubs. Oh man, you're throwing a cash around. Uh, one up Bash Guard Chain Guide. One up V2 180mm dropper post, Wolf Tooth dropper lever. One up Carbon Bars. Bit of a one up fan. 
uh, Doty grip, stem, seat, seat post clamp, Shimano four piston XC brakes, rapid racer fender, uh, new proof hard inserts. Tell you what, you've done everything right on that bike. That thing looks awesome. Absolutely gorgeous looking bike. I would probably opt for a black stem and a black collar, but you look like you've deliberately matched them in with the pedals there. And to be fair, it does look really nice. Dude, what a bike, Justin. Um, really, really nice. Big Kona fan. Haven't ridden one for far too long. Last one I rode was that Process 111, um, which I think they should bring back in new form. Kona, if you're listening, bring back the Process 111. Uh, the world needs a 29er with 111 mil travel that you can ride. You can outride anything on if you're willing to hold on to that thing. That thing was absolutely bonkers as far as bikes goes. Such a good bike ahead of its time. Um, okay, next up's from Jean in New Zealand. A couple of weeks ago, my daughter sent an image of the Santa Cruz box I modified with my airdrop edit V4 frame, waiting to be built. Now I've done it. Dude, pictures as well. Beautiful pictures. Look at that first one. Right, so, EXT Storia, shock on there. Oh, the Manitou fork, Mazda tires, wow. I think you've got pretty good taste. It's a good looking bike. So, Mazda Pro, EXT Storia, XT drivetrain, Magura MT7 brakes, one up dropper, pedals, cockpit, bash guard, sun ring lay Duroc 35 rims, ring lay Bubba, Bubba X hubs, yes, I used to love the Bubbers. Um, race face Atlas cranks, Cane Creek Hellbender, headset and bottom bracket, wow. Rides like an absolute dream. I can imagine, look at the thing, it's absolutely beautiful. What a bike. Uh, now my daughter will inherit my BMC Speed Fox Trail Crew and get to mod it by covering it in unicorns and girly stuff. Haha. <laughs> well, let's see that then. Get it modded and get that sent in. Love to see it. The more mods, the better. Uh, love your stuff. And thank you for sending some more stuff in. And next up's from Glenn in New Zealand, in Wellington, in fact. Here's my pride and joy, my hardtail. I've just sold my Trek Remedy Enduro. As it wasn't getting ridden, I always preferred to ride this. Hey, that's cool. So you prefer riding a hardtail. Uh, Cool stuff. So you've got DVO, Onks, uh, 160mm fork, SLX four pot brakes, oil slick rotors. Ooh, nice. Spank 50mm riser bar. Hey, I hear Spank stuff's pretty good these days. Like, I've not really ridden their stuff for a long time. I rode some wheels way back and had uh, brown rims called Uhas or Ubers or something, and they were decent. Interested to see their stuff. Uh, one up pedals in green, cush core front and rear. All right, that says a lot about the way that you ride. Like it. Awesome stuff. Thank you for sending that in, Glenn. Um, got a cool bike, you've done anything cool to it. Even if you've just built a bike, send it in and we'll chuck it on the show. Love what you guys do. And while we're on the vein of user content, let's jump into Bike Cave. So if you've got a Bike Cave, it could be a shed, it could be the back of the van, it could be the loft, literally anywhere. Anything counts that you can keep your bike in and preferably work on it, um, do something to it at least. Send it in, link right there, another one, banging one in the description underneath. Click through and um, yeah, we'll see what you got. So first up this week is from David in Wollongong, Australia. Uh, this cave is a thank you to Blake and the other GMBN by Cave Ideas. Hope it's worth showing, loving the show. I already love it, even just seeing it in the raw state here. Um, yeah, this is great. Okay, so nice clean workspace there, got some windows for ventilation, you've got uh, some beams overhead for hanging stuff. Nice little tool board there. Awesome stuff. So you, general household tools on there as well, like an axe and stuff. Hey, it's good stuff there. You've got those nice Park Pro Allen keys down there as well. Or at least Allen keys that look just like them. Um, I'd, I'd guess they're Park by the fact you've got the picks going on there too. Hey, great selection. I love it when people have all different tools because you've really sort of hand-picked the different stuff there. Looking good. What brand is your drill? Can't see it from here. Is it works? I guess it's the works, looking at the colours of it. Nice stuff. Oh, cool. So you've got your surfboard, snowboard, snowboard in Australia. Snowboard, Australia. Blue Mountains, somewhere? I don't know. Um, never realised you really got much snow in Australia. Hey, perhaps you just travelled to go snowboarding. What do I know? I've never been to Australia. No one's ever invited me. Awesome looking stuff. Loving the surfing pictures. And I do hope that's you in the pictures, or your son, or something like that, because that would make it even cooler. They look like rad pictures, either way. And there's the bikes. Oh, look at that old glory. Lovely looking bike. Great to see that. Of course, nice new canyon there, but uh, I'm actually all about that glory. Got good memories of that. When uh, Rick from EWS used to work with me on MBUK, he had one of those and he absolutely loved the thing. 
little bit heavy, but probably the most reliable and best privateer downhill bike of all time. I reckon those things are absolutely brilliant. And there we go, some other shots here. So, wow, look at this. So you've got Blake's Bike Cave, you've got your bench, the world's biggest ring spanner by the looks of it. What on earth is that for? Is that just a prop? Novelty factor. I love the, uh, the, the horns up the top there. Love it, and you've got a Queenstown selection there. Um, awesome stuff. We your WD-40. Oh, you've got the William Neely book. What a book that is. How cool is that? Loving it. Dude, awesome stuff. Really, really like it. Is that a little heater down there? What, what am I missing about, about this and where you live? Tell me. Man, look at the place. Look, sorry, I just seen this last shot. That was all out of sync there. Uh, the last shot looks amazing. And you've got a trail dog as well. Even better. Little trail pooch. Having a little rest and a nice rubber floor. Seriously, dude. David, this is awesome. Great setup you got there. The more you look at it, the better it gets. Okay, next up's from Chris in Chippenham. Dolly, this is a project me and my mates took on last year. Had a wooden shed originally, but wanted something more secure for the steeds. Not quite finished yet. Knees racking out and the anchors fitting for the bikes. Uh, my bike, uh, I've got a 2019 Capra CF Pro used for constant smashing in the bike parks. And it's got a new drop post. And my girlfriend's new Mega 2021. What a bike. Uh, she loves it. And then there's my old faithful BMX. Well, let's have a look and see what you've done. Oh, nice. Doing proper foundations. More people need to do proper foundations. Yes. All right, I'm appreciating this fully because it's essentially what I've done with this. So you've got a lintel and you've got a proper like keyed or toothed in to the main building. I had to do that. I had to lift the lintel up there by myself because there was no one around to help me at the time. And I still, I can't quite work out how I got that one up. It's an old school concrete one, probably about four foot across, maybe a bit wider than that. Um, God knows how much it weighed. Probably weighed as much as I did. And I had to get that over my head, climb up a ladder with it and get it in place without sort of putting my back out or um, pushing my guts out through me. Uh, through my little ring there. <laughs> but I did it. And it looks like you've done the same. Awesome stuff, proper back door in there. Dude, this is awesome. This just reminds me of uh, building this place. Looks great, proper ceiling on there, nice brickwork, nice and secure, good stuff. Okay, we're on a bit of a roll, so we're gonna dive into Rewind as well. Hopefully we've still got enough time for this. Uh, show's gonna be running long this week, but uh, here we go. So first up is from Valdemar, and this is an Evil, wow, nice one. So this is all the way from Denmark. Um, the Evil DOC, so that stood for drug of choice. Now, a little bit, little bit of uh, info about Evil bikes in this era that you might not be aware of. Uh, so I think this one is a 2007, I think you're saying here. So Evil, used to make chain guides called Evil Chain Guides. And then that company later split off and became E13. They do chain guides and wheels and other stuff now and Evil branched off to just do bikes, but they were cool. And if anyone out there has got an early Evil Chain Guide, uh, show us a picture of it because they looked really cool. Dare I say better than the E13 ones, uh, even though they're exactly the same. Just the fact that it's Evil on it made them cooler, but wicked stuff. So Mavic 321, 721 rims, uh, Revolver SS hubs, Hayes Bremster brakes, uh, HFX mag, uh, 185 and 160 rotors, Primo crank set, transition chainring, Atom Lab stem. Yes, mate, Atom Lab. Remember them, that's the good old days. DMR Def Grip, Schwalbe tabletop tires, Odyssey Aitken saddle, nice, Mike Aitken. Uh, Dior XT gear and shifter. Dude, what a bike, looks great. Classic evil head tube badge with the skulls all over it there. Look at those bars. <laughs> Pro tapers by answer. I've got to say, so I used to have the HFX mag brakes as well. And I think the HFX mags are one of the nicest looking levers out there. Could never make them work very well. They always glazed over or would boil or what something would happen to them, but they felt really good when they worked and they looked brilliant. They felt so good. That sort of distinct curve or hook in the lever. I always remember Scott Beaumont used to run them and used to run them quite inboard and his finger used to be in the little nook there. Um, looked cool in the pictures anyway. Rad looking bike. Wow, look at this. So this one's from Alec in Sweden. A 1991 new old stock Pace RC200 F1 and my brand new 2020 uh, RC295 for comparison. That is a proper retro versus modern. Wow, cool. Two mentions of Pace in one show. Love it. I'm originally from Pickering in Yorkshire, so only a 10 minute ride from the Pace HQ. Oh mate, that's ace. So you've heavily gone for the black and gold look on both of these, which just looks great. Hey, is that an x light stem? Yeah, it looks like an x light stem on there. So you've got flight titanium saddle, original paste, rigid forks, Richie rims by the looks of it as well. Uh, can't see the tires, but they could be Panaracers. 
Minsource top cap that came with MBUK way back in the day. Yeah, the X-Lite stem. So X-Lite, um, one of their products back then used to be Muckoff. And then they, the whole brand rebranded and turned into Muckoff because it was by far the biggest product that they sold and a complete brand restructure. Brilliant stuff, always loved that brand. Um, great stuff. And I, I actually got to meet the late Rex Trimnell as well, who's a just incredible, incredible man. Some of the stuff he had developed way back then was just leagues ahead of anyone else. Uh, amazing stuff. He made a downhill fork with the Wampa, which just felt unbelievable. Um, I don't know if they ever saw production. If they did, it's in very small quantities, but again, so far ahead of its time compared to everything else around. We've had a lot of good stuff come out of the UK, actually. Really good stuff. Um, I'm going to go and see Pace at some point soon because I haven't seen Adrian, Kathy, Sophie and, and all of them for a very long time. It'd be really nice to catch up and see him. But uh, hey, thank you for all the great memories sending this Rewind stuff in. Uh, we'll see you on next week's show. Okay, well, that's the end of this week's show. Hopefully you enjoyed the ride. Uh, we managed to get Rewind top mods um, and also a bit of bike cave action in there as well, which is pretty cool. And let us know what you think about the cool technology that impresses you. As I say, additive manufacturing, 3D printing, uh, especially when it comes to making things like this, uh, staggers me what you can do with it. But uh, I'd love to know what you think is really impressive. So please do let us know in the comments and uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and all that stuff and see you in the next video. ta -ra.